You're ready? You're ready? You're ready? Yes. 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 You have you just stepped out into, into, into the world, world of chaos. chaos. Where everybody, Where everybody goes, goes hard. hard. Tickets because the game about to start. What up, Ken? What's going on, baby? Sorry to keep you waiting, brother. No, nah, it's all good. Um, it's all good, man. Just uh, had to get on, man. Had to get on. I heard you talk good things, man. Had to get on. Oh, uh, man. Yo, let me tell you something, brother. It's, it's been a long time, man. Um, hold on. Make sure he's on here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good, good. We here. Hey, listen, man. I, I can say this, man. The last time I saw you, uh, we was up at Empire State Games in Syracuse. Yeah, yeah. I had some great times up in uh Syracuse. Um uh Empire State Games was it was lit. It was always lit, man. It was great. Great competition. Mm -hmm. Great, it was great, man. Listen, that I, I'm gonna share this one story later on, but I, it's just one thing I remember with uh with Ralph James, man. This is yeah. with the funniest story, man, and I still remember it to this day. All right. Yeah. So, um, welcome to Basketball Heads, brother. I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, thanks. And we want to get right to it, man. I always ask guys when they first come on, who introduced you to the game? Well, who, that, that's great. That's a great question. The great question is my sister. I was six years old, and um, out in ISA Park, you know, that's where we, we grew up. My grandfather lived 108th uh, and 165th Street, uh, South Jamaica. That's, right. where it all, that's where it all began for me. My sister, Danielle, who I love, who I, who I love dearly, um, she took me, she used to take me to the park to watch me, and then the basketball. I always cried for the basketball. Always cried, and she gave. They gave me the ball. I just threw it. In, I used to throw it up at the hoop, and um, you know that's just how I began loving the game of basketball. My sister Danielle. Okay, okay, okay. So, so your game kind of got its birth in Southside. Somewhat. I, yeah, I, 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 just, I just see my boy. Yeah. I see my boy shine the building. So I want to say that. Yeah, Southside, you know, Southside and, and Left Rack, they be like, where Kenny from? They all, I always say, hey, I'm from Southside, but I moved to Left Rack when I started understanding and knowing, you know, everything about the game. I was in That's Left right. Rack. So, That's you know, right. but, but both get, both get the love though. Both get the love. Facts, facts. Where you get the name Chips from? Um, well, that was my mother. My mother. My mother named me Chibs uh, when I was born. You know, when it was four days, four days old, they, they bring the baby in, and, and they you see your mother, whatever. She her mouth was full. She said cheeks. It came out Chibs, and she just wow. kept Chibs. She just kept calling me Chibs, Chibs, Mister Chibs, Mister Chibs. So that's the name of my documentaries, Mister Chibs. But that's then when right, I went to right. school, when I went to school. They had to, you know, give me a a, a, a government name. <laughs> we like to say government name. So right, uh, right. my government name was Kenneth. You know, through through um uh her ex boyfriend, you know, uh Kenneth Foreman, um right. who, um, who who took great care of me, but he wasn't my father. He took great care of me, but he wasn't my father. His name was Kenneth. So she named me Kenneth after him. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, who was your first coach? Did you play like elementary school ball and then you went to junior high school, play ball, or was you know, junior high school would just start off? Mr. Morales was my high school, my first coach, um, in OLA at OLA down, um, on Queens Boulevard. 
You know, I right. played DYO basketball, and I began to I, – I, I ripped the lead up, and I began to, to play well. And uh, Mr. Morales was my coach. And um, then I met, you know, people back home in Left Rack. You know, Left Rack okay. about 15 minutes from there. Um, I met Vincent Smith. Vincent Smith is my mentor. You know, that's 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 where I learned. That's where I, I knew how to play basketball. But I learned some of the, the best things, you know, uh, about about life, you know, through Vincent Smith. It, it was awesome, man. Vincent Smith. And his older brother was Kenny Smith. So he had went to North Carolina from Malloy. I always wanted to go to Malloy, you know, um, you know, uh, because he went to Malloy. Um, I went there um, and played well there, you know. I always thought Vincent was the older brother. No. <laughs> yes, he was. Vincent is the older brother. Excuse me. Vincent Smith. Okay, 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 okay. Vincent got you, Smith. Got you, got you, got you. Kenny got you. Smith. Kenny Smith. Right. And then myself, Kenny Anderson. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Jason uh, yeah. Gilliam yeah. was just saying last night how Vincent had a was very impactful in his life, both him and Kenny. Yes, yes. So it's you guys same. did come from the same pedigree. It's the same. It's the same. The same pedigree and everything. But um, uh, he went to Malloy. I wanted to go to Malloy, and right. I used to go. I used to go up to uh, Vincent Smith's house apartment where Kenny where Kenny lived. And he had all trophies. He had about 200 trophies. And I was like, uh, I'm, I'm going to get more than trophies than him. I'm going to get more trophies than him. And um, I wind up, um, you know, getting more trophies than him. It just accolades. And I played I played through Kenny Smith. I wanted to be just as good at, at every aspect. Every aspect. Right. School, not only basketball, but school, how, was, how, how, how he was, you know, he was – he was intelligent. He was a very intelligent right. uh, young man. He definitely was, and and that was that become that was because his father and mother raised him very well. And so I, I would say uh, Kenny was the goal, right? You have somebody that you can model yourself after, right? Yeah, who was yes. the guy in the neighborhood? Who was the guy in the neighborhood who was like the best ball player besides yourself, right? Because you know Kenny went on and did his thing. Yeah. Who was in left rack doing their thing that you said? You know what? I need to beat him before I can go to the next level. Wow. You had a lot of players. I took, you know, pictures on Instagram with uh, Kelly Blue. Kelly Blue was – oh, he was great. Um, Adolphus Gaffney went to Malloy before me. AD, he went to – Yeah, you have to dump the Gaffney, yeah. Name he ring went bell. To, he went to Brooklyn – he went to Brooklyn College before me. Right. He was great. He lived in left rack for a while. Uh uh, Antoine, I don't know his last name. I don't know his school. Antoine, he went. He played out in Left Rack Park. It, it was great, man. It was like three, four, five guys. Gary Voice went to Talenton. He played. Yes, yeah. uh, he, he went. He lived in Left Rack. Uh, Alvin Lott went to Cardinal Hayes. He lived in, Le uh, in Left Rack. I watched Alvin Lott. Yeah, that's you know, crazy, yo. Yo, yo. It was crazy. It was crazy players that. You know, you always you you always wanted to play like or be like right. or look in left rack city. We had a lot of balls. Now down here, these names, man. Yeah. Definitely a lot of ballers coming out. And, of they, there, and they was old, and they was all before me. They was older than me, but it was some. It was something to look at. Something to look at. Okay, so who did you pattern your game after? Well, I I, I didn't pattern, I pattern my game after. I took you know. A little from everybody, you know, Kenny Smith, uh, Rod Strickland, uh, Pearl Washington, Mark Jackson. I saw mm. those guys play, and I just wanted a little bit of everybody on right. how the guards played in New York City. So, you know, there was a little bit of flair. There was, you know, I, I could handle the ball extremely well. Uh, and I could shoot the ball from extremely well in high school and, and college. And then right. when getting pro, I had to change some things a little bit. But high school, um, you know, I, I, I try to pick and choose who I who I play like. I just took a little bit from each of their games, and those are the guys that I, that give that give all the love. Kenny Patterson was a, yeah. a, a great Kenny Patterson, Pearl Washington, Mark Jackson, Rod Strickland, Boo Harvey. Boo, hey, we had great point guards in New York City. It was yes. like five or six guys I can look at it like, oh, 
you know, I want to be like him. I want to, you know, I want to trench my game like these guys. They were just awesome players, man. Listen, we we're we're missing that 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 guard power in New York City, right? But yes. what I can say is, there's this one kid named Khalil Brantley who I'm very big on, right? That's my guy, Shah's son. He played for Boys and Girls. Yeah. How you guys used to pack the house and how Lon used to be outside the gym to watch you guys yeah. play. He, he's yeah. doing it on that level. See, you know, I'm a college coach, but he's not. He's going to go bigger. You know, I'm, I'm in AIA. I'm down in Fist. I'm a small school. I talked to Shy and he told me about his son. He, he, he's going to be great. But I told Shy that keep everything you know, in house and make yes. him learn and make him go to school, make yes. him learn, make him go to school because he's going to need that. He's going to need that. And he'll be fine. If he goes yeah. to school, you can't just, you can't just live through basketball. No, and you can't, you can live. You can't just do it. They're not nowadays is a little different. Yeah. And, and, and that's what I told him. You know what I'm saying? Get his grades correct and boom, you know, make him, make him get better. Work out, you know, get get on his game and both academically and skill wise. Well, I'm gonna give you a flash for the past right now. My yeah. boy Larry Timberlake, who you know is Paco little brother, yeah. um, the name is State Stem. He said, We played with the Broncos in 1982, Biddy's basketball, city yeah. summer, citywide summer championship. We lost to Gauchos, Arnold Bernard, Jamal Walker. Yeah, you remember yeah, that? Oliver, yeah, I don't remember that. But Arnold Bernard was a great point guard. Jamal Walker, you know, was a great. I beat him in the, in the city championship my sophomore year. Uh, right. But I don't, I don't remember that far. Bitty basketball is kind of whoa. But it's, 82? It's, 82? Long time, brother. <laughs> That's a long time. Long ago. time. Long 82. Right. But uh, yeah, I did play with uh, the Broncos, so yeah, I had to play. But we lost to the Gauchos. But um, it, it was okay, it was okay, great, okay. It, it was great. So you played with you played with all three. You played with all three uh, AU teams in New York City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I really did. I played with the Broncos. I played with Riverside, and I played with uh, Gauchos. Right. Yeah. Because I okay. wanted to, I, I wanted to learn. I wanted to play against the best. You know. Uh, my boy Pat from Detroit, yeah. he's a history teacher. He said, what are the advantages and disadvantages of being a lefty? Wow. Yeah. Everybody goes to the right side. You know, everybody <laughs> jumping over to the right side. I'm shooting with the left. <laughs> I'm going mm. to the left. So we all, you know, accustom all the right-handers and it's many right-handers. It's not too many lefties in the world. And that's what I think is our big advantage. They, they go into the they go they go into the right hand. They jump to the right side, so you just you able to see see right over them, shoot over the left. I don't care how big you are, you know, you know. Listen, now, brother, you don't got to tell me. We was playing Empire State, and yeah. I had the ball, and you was posting up Kristen Leitner, <laughs> right? And I'm really not trying to give you the ball because I'm like this shit don't work. You was like. Yo, T, pass me the ball. <laughs> I said, fuck it. I gave you the ball. You pump fake and reverse that shit. And I'm saying, I even run out of court. I'm sitting there going, look at this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, right? those, so, was crazy I, those, those kind of situations, yeah. I definitely know and definitely and can vouch for, brother. So yeah. now you got Kenny Smith and Vincent Smith in your life, right? Yeah. yeah. Do, that keep, do that keep the other handlers and the other high schools away from you? Oh yeah, definitely. I had some real, you know. I, I was, you know, I, I was raised in Left Frack City, Queens, and 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 and, and this is what I, I love them to this day. I still talk to all the guys. They let nobody come near me. <laughs> they let nobody come near me, you know. But Vincent, Pierre Turner, Vincent Smith, uh, and then the guys do it wrong, and do it right. wrong. They didn't let nobody come near me. It was it was it was voodoo. So. So it was it was big back then, you know, and that's just how they that that's just how they treated me and left frat. And my mother, you know, rest in peace. My mother, you know, we loved it out there. It was it was just great, just living out in left frat and being a part of um a part of that hood. So when I played, when I when I when I made it, I had a tournament, the Kenny Anderson Classic, 
Right. Uh, it, it was huge. Like it went, we, 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 uh, about 10, 11 years. It was like, it was, it we went to like 68 teams. It was just everybody would come in from different boroughs. It was awesome. Right. Yeah. Um, this is why you was telling Shah to keep everything in house, right? Because the same things that you went yeah. through and you was protected. A lot yeah. of guys out here take advantages, taking advantage of guys, and, and they coming up short, right? Yeah. So it benefited you because it it helped you mature, right? Got you along, and they push you hard, and also they push you in the classroom, and it was they made sure no one took advantage of you. Yes. Yeah, right. And that's, yeah, my mother, you know, she was like, I don't know, the, my, my, I know about basketball. Y'all just take care of my son. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then that's what they did. And they were genuine guys. And it's hard now to find genuine guys in our, in our neighborhoods. You know, you you always you know, you always find a lot of uh, 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 wolves out there to take advantage of young young men. You know, and their talent. And that's that's the shaky thing about it. You know. Yeah. Alvin Ritz said, do you remember taking our Queens team to the championship in the wheelchair classic? Yeah, I remember a little bit. It was, it was, that was a crazy. That was crazy. Because I know I remember I stole the ball from Nick Sanchez, who went to Christ the King in the wheelchair classic uh, right. two, two or three times and scored. I, I remember, you know, you know, some plays I do remember, but. You know, I, some plays I don't, but the wheelchair classic was off the hook, man. It was a lot of people out there. It was it was basketball in the fullest. I grew up, you know, eighty eighty five 85 to 89. And right. that, that was when high school basketball, summer basketball, it was huge in New York City. So I caught it at the right time. Yeah, because right after the, the, the Pearl phenomenon that was going on, New York City kept going on, and then you popped up on the scene, right? Yeah. You was one of those guys that kind of changed the culture. Pearl yeah. was, right? He did yeah. it as well. Remember, yeah. Hip-hop was, it was at its yeah. infancy, well. and, and people was making moves, and a lot of things happening in the streets, and you was a part of that culture, brother, yeah. and helped Thank change you. it. So that's, you know, that's yeah. definitely the loop. Yeah. I've always, and, and um, you know, I played in the NBA, played in college, but... My high school, my high school career, and and in playing in New York City made me made me who I who I am today. Without it, I don't know if I would have made it. I, I really don't, you know. And um, I really appreciate all the, all the New Yorkers that played against me, and um, it just was great. And it's great to hearing you know from you guys now. Just to just we could talk about it, you know, talk about the, the, how we were how how we was raised and how we was brought up in in life and basketball. It was great, man. I love it, man. Got another question for you, my boy Devon. He owns a company called Four Nine Six and uh, Four Nine Six Sports in Atlanta. Yes, yeah. definitely looking forward. Yo, D, come on, man, get with this sponsorship, brother. I need you, brother. Yeah, uh, he said, what was your recruiting experience like? And what can you tell young ballers coming behind you? Uh, my recruiting was, um, you know, I, I learned a lot, you know, in my high school. So Vincent, Pierre Turner, Coach mm -hmm. Carroll, they, 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 didn't help, they didn't hold my hand. They just said, what schools are you interested in? And and I right. was interested, and I was just interested in five schools, and it, and, it, and it cracked down to three real quick. Um, and, you know, Syracuse, uh, Duke, uh, Georgetown, uh, Georgia Tech, and um, what was uh, uh, that was it really? It was it was like four schools. I knew who it was it was ahead of me. I knew what I was trying to how I was trying to fit in, and um, I really. I really, my grandmother at the time lived in Georgetown, lived in Washington. Mm -hmm. If John Thompson would have recruited me, you know, mm. the, the the Olympics was going on, and uh, he was dealing with the, the the soul and all that Olympics was going on. If he right. would have recruited me, came to my house, I might have would have went to Georgetown. But uh, I, I I didn't go, and uh, he didn't recruit me. I, and I would have played with Alonzo and all them guys, but. George, I was watching. I was watching TV one day, and I saw Mark Price and John Sally, and I was like, "Wow, 
Who's that? He would just right, right. He would just shoot and go and pick a roll. He was just playing more, playing much freely. And I was like, whoa. And they almost beat Georgetown. They lost to it by two. But then the school, it picked. I was like, what school is that? And it was Georgia Tech. And I started, you know, that they're on my list. And I started uh, really wanting to go there. And then I met, you know, Coach Crimmins. He was from the Bronx. He was from the Bronx. He went to All Hollows. He was a good guy, man. It, it was all New York. It was all New York. And I was like, wow. If I go there, it, 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 it can, um, it can, I can benefit myself and do well. Wow. That's crazy. Now, so I'm going to go back to that story, right? We all in the back in Syracuse. Yeah. Uh, myself, you, Ralph James, Billy yeah. Singleton, uh, Conrad McCray, it's a whole slew of us. And Conrad came late because he was coming to tell everybody that he signed. Yeah. Right? And the thing was, you were supposed to sign with him, but you was like, nah, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. <laughs> yeah. Rest in yeah. peace, Conrad. You yeah. know, he, and the, his facial expression kind of changed or whatever. Right? Yeah. So then the police come in the back. Wow. Right? We got some bruises or whatever. We back there chilling. And Ralph James said, hold on, fellas. Let me handle this. <laughs> Ralph James walked over to the police officers <laughs> and says, hello, sir. We're back here celebrating Conrad McCray and Kenny Anderson signing to Syracuse. And we're here with the rest of our cronies. Now let me tell you something, bro. I think this 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 eighty six eighty seven. Yo, that's the first time I heard the word crony. <laughs> right? This shit coming from Ralph James, bro. And we all was just sitting back watching. Yo, yeah. like two minutes, the cops turned around and broke out, man. It was like we could have been in the paper, right? Yeah. Some big yeah. scandal, yeah. and Ralph yeah. James just cleaned that up, man. Yeah. How, yeah. how was he as a teammate, brother? Oh, he was great. And I still talk to him nowadays. He went to Harvard. He played for um Yes. Um the the coach that uh coached in um coach Chicago Bulls and he coached in Minnesota. What's his name? Yes. Yes, um, he's a he's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, what's his uh he won a championship with uh Boston Celtics. Uh, he was yeah, coach. I, I, um, right. And, um, you know, um, you know, uh, Ralph James is great, man. He's always around, and um, I, I, I got his number on speed dial. I call him, see how he's doing, see, see how his family's doing, because he played, he played with me. I'm a lawyer, and he was one of the guys that made me understand. You know, school was a was 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 more important than basketball. And he worked extremely hard, and he, he I guess, I, I think he graduated my my school, but Lloyd, like number one. Number right. one, a student, in the, it was crazy, you know. <laughs> and he played on the team, so I was yeah. like, "Wow!" So and it was he could show up in games in suits. You yeah. can show up in games in suits, right? Yeah. Like real yeah. shit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Rob was dressed up to the team, shoe, yeah. suit, yeah. and ready yeah. to play. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So he was great, man. Playing for, playing with him it was awesome. All right, got another question. Uh, Sirius Style said, "Ask him about." The Brooklyn Queens championship game against Carlton Paco screen. Paco dropped 47 in the loss. Yeah, I, I you know, we won. That's when Carlton screamed. I don't know how many points he had, but Paul, right. uh, he was he was pretty nice. He was he was a he was Severian uh point guard, you know, yeah. but uh, we just had too much for him, man. We just had too much for him, man. We had we had a crew and we beat him my freshman year. We beat everybody. I, I won the city championship two years in a row. You know, um, you know, myself, my freshman year, sophomore, and then we lost because Malik came. Malik Sealy, he came in and um in Queen and uh, Christ the King was tough uh with uh Derek Phelps and um Khaled Reeves. You know, but that was my junior and senior year. But uh, Carlton Screen was a great point guard. Definitely, definitely. So, um, Arthur Lee Walker, right? Number yes. one of you guys. That, yes. He said, uh, talk about the full court competition in the street ball and playing at Dean Street. Oh, the Dean Street got me better, man. I used to go over to DC. I used to spend the, spend the night over at uh, Antoine Machard's house a lot. 
and we used to play at D D Street every every morning. We'll get up and play. It was it was th tough competition, tough competition, man. And uh, that's what I say. It just it really wasn't uh, high school ball or. Uh, it was just D Street, you know. We made you competitor. It made you compete against the best, best kids in Brooklyn. You know, right. it was awesome, man. It was awesome. And every 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 weekend, you had to get up and, and, and show and prove you could play. And um, you know, before the papers and all that, you know, it was great. It was great basketball. Yeah, you was one of the few guys from Queens yeah. and uptown and the Bronx that came to Brooklyn. I was just telling this to Malloy Naismith, right? Yeah. <laughs> we, Malloy. we, yeah, we used to have to travel. The Brooklyn guys would have to travel everywhere to play, yeah. right? Yeah. And not too many of the big tournaments were in Brooklyn, yeah. so we had to go everywhere else and play and compete against everyone else. And no, not too many people came to Brooklyn. A few came, and now I'm hearing you came. Yeah, I came, and I, you know, Vincent Smith, you know, my mentor, he told me. Yo, go around New York. That's the way you get your name built up and you get play you play the best against kids that's um you know that's after what you trying to accomplish. And um and that's what I did, man. You know, I went to every borough. Every borough. I was looking I went I went, I went to Long Island. You know, I was going <laughs> over. I was, I was just looking to play against stiff competition. I went to every barrel, Long Island, every Mount Vernon, in the Bronx, everywhere, just just to compete against the best. So my name will be out there when 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 they know they know of a of a of Kenny Anderson came and played. I'm like, oh okay, he's nice. You know, that's what that's right. what he wanted me to do. So who was the guy who asked you bust? Who had a name? That let you know you was ready. Uh, I know that's a question I ask everybody. So yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. keep it one hundred. <laughs> you you you, you probably Paco probably Paco screen uh, called the screen. You know because I was a freshman. He was the he was I was I think I was a freshman. He was a senior. He, he was a senior. He was a senior. He was the top point guard. You know in the in this in the Brooklyn Queens diocese. You know yeah. um, what we go against, and that's who I know I had to go after. I have to compete against the best to be the best. Yeah, you know? so I would say Carlton Screen. You know, when I was in high, when he was a senior and I was a freshman. You know, God, I would say, yep, Carlton Screen. Yes, he, 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 he was, he was, he was, he was tough. Then he went to Providence and played very well there. Yes, let me tell you another short story. I remember being up at Glen Falls, right? Yeah, and Paco and his. Father, yeah, Mr. Screen, yeah, they're walking down the hall and they both say, You know, what's up, Glenn? And I was just so shocked that he knew my name. I was just like, Holy shit! You no, know, and we all know each other, but you don't know who knows who, right? Yeah, so and we're gonna get to you guys, sky yeah. blue and white uniforms and Malloy, yeah, yeah. compared to all the raggedy shit that we had at Lincoln. <laughs> but, <laughs> Yo, let me tell you, brother. You guys got we, and we gonna go back a little bit to your yeah. high school. But I remember yeah. we stand at the hotel, and you guys is up on the platform, and we downstairs, and we looking up at you guys. They're like y'all motherfuckers on a podium. <laughs> y'all had y'all sky blue and white matching. Nobody had mismatching shit on like we did. <laughs> Nobody super faded. Y'all yeah. had on Converse's. Everybody had the same sneakers on. Yeah. yeah. And we was like, oh, shit. We in for some trouble. And yeah. I don't think if it was for Sean Williams to tell us to stop looking at y'all. And he yeah. had a good relationship with Ralph James. Okay. And he had said something slick to Ralph James, and they laughed. And that kind of broke the ice. But y'all kind of had a shit for a moment, man. It was just like, okay. Yeah. These motherfuckers are like North Carolina. And then everybody was talking about the Malloy's North Carolina press. <laughs> Watch yeah. out for the Malloy's North Carolina press. Yeah. yeah. We um the Lincoln, that that hurt me. That hurt me because, you know, we took y'all too light. We took y'all lightly. We was like, Oh, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna blow y'all out, we're gonna win. And then we the first half came, we was like, Wow, this team is good. We play. We didn't know 
we didn't know y'all was that good. And we took advantage. We, we just, it was just like, uh, we're going to blow them out. You know, after winning the city, we was just on a high. You know, we, we just thought we was going to win easily. And y'all came out and y'all, y'all, y'all beat us, man. Y'all, your hands up. Y'all, y'all just beat us. The only people that believed in us was us and our coach. First, our <laughs> coach. Right? Because he told us, he told us y'all was going to be looking past us. And yes. you had, yeah. you had just beat, I think we y'all beat, y'all beat, uh, Zaverian or y'all beat yeah. St. Anthony's. St. Anthony's. Y'all be St. And you hit the buzzer beater. Yeah, Tom so, Bryce. Tom Bryce. Already, yeah. Right. We already know about you. Yeah. You already taking them to the city championship and you winning the fucking game for them in three quarters. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. 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 Luckily, we had Tiny, Sean Williams. Yeah. And Bernard Mitchell. Bernard yeah. Mitchell had one hell of a fucking game. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, and that's what I, they, Bernard Mitchell, wherever you at, man, you know, you, you beat me my yeah, my, my high school, my freshman year, you you was awesome. You, I think you had like 30-something points. I was like, Yeah, yeah, he, he had 35, he had 35, 35. man. It, it was, was like, yeah. Right. Yo, we, we, we didn't know, we, 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 we hardly knew at all, we, we didn't know none of y'all. <laughs> yeah, I played, no, I, I, knew, trust I me. knew, I knew, I was like, I'm telling you, man, let's be ready. You know, that was like, First court, you know, get into the game. You know, first second court, I was like, let's be, let's get ready. It was too late though. Y'all had y'all confidence, and y'all was rolling. That was the key for us because yep. we couldn't understand why your coach didn't play the first quarter. And no, no. and when you was on Tiny, when you was on Tiny Show, I'm the one who asked the question. Like, oh, was you disappointed for just playing three quarters, right? Oh, because oh. we prayed on that. Yes, yes. And I wasn't, I, it, it was the same all year long. We wasn't going to change. My coach, he, 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 he taught me, like, you're a freshman. You have your time to shine. We're going to let my senior, Greg Tracy, start and play and see if he get any offers. And that's that. And that's that. And that's what Jack Curran, my coach, made me, made me do. And I respected that. And I was a freshman, and I understood that. And most kids wouldn't, but you, most kids' family wouldn't, uh, whatever. But uh, it was it was great, and I and I did it, you know. Thank God for Jack Curran, man. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we got we got that first one out, and you know, been rolling ever since. But yeah, that yeah. that kind of gave us the confidence. And then we had to play against Arnold Bernardo the next night, and went to double overtime. Yes. And then they have us play against King Rice and them like ten thirty in the morning. Like you serious? Y'all lost but, to King Rice and them. Yes, they only oh, had to play did. one game. Like we done played y'all. Like y'all yeah. was like the damn state championship. Then we yeah. had to play against Arnold Bernard, right? Played, and all these guys. Y'all played um King Rice and y'all lost to King Rice and them. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what we lost in the state championship to. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Cause right. I, was, I didn't want to watch. I didn't watch no more basketball after that. We lost to y'all. <laughs> I was like, oh, and I had to go back home and hear it, man. I was like, oh, we lost to Lincoln. It was just right. Uh, yeah, but okay. uh, y'all deserve to win. Y'all deserve to win that game. Y'all played us. Y'all played well. Yeah, you you can. I'm telling you, that would be like the question of the century. If anybody can name the starting five in the Lincoln 1986 City Championship. <laughs> Yeah. If anybody can name, if anybody can name the leading scorer, that that's right? correct. Bernard Mitchell. You, Bernard Mitchell, you you just said it, and um, I, he he never had a big game like that before. Yes, he had thirty six against Joe Green. He only was show up against the best. Oh, oh he was one of those guys. He oh. we play against somebody regular. He, he have like 12, 14, maybe eighteen yeah. points. Yeah. But if he knew it was a chance for him to shine, wow. he turned it up. Yeah. And listen, I interviewed him, man, and it's such yeah. – not his life turned out tragic, but his basketball yeah. career could have been a lot better, right? Yeah, could've. It could have been – because he could have played anywhere. Yeah, he could have. Right? So, yeah. and salute to my dual T. Yo, brother, you always a legend in my book, man. Um – all right, we got another question. My boy Pat said, "What are you uh, curious to hear your thoughts on that 1990 NCAA tournament overtime win 
against Michigan State and Steve Smith. Yeah, that was great, man. That was an exciting game. Uh, you know, we was going back and forth, um, you know. But before that, we had beat Shaq and them. Shaq, uh, Stanley Roberts, Chris Jackson. And then we that's moved on. That's right. That's yeah, right. Yeah, how, how do you say this? I know you beat him, but, you know, yeah. Chris yeah, Jackson was. Chris Jackson mm -hmm. was, uh, he had a bad game. Um, Shaq, Stanley Roberts. I, I, they had a they had a weird team, and and to me, uh, the, the coach Dale Brown didn't didn't work right with 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 the bigs and the, and the and Chris Jackson at the time. His name Abdul Rab Rabouf. He he let him control the game a lot more. The guard where they should have got the ball inside a lot more, and they didn't. Right. You know what I mean? It killed them. But the Steve Smith game was um one of those games was back and forth and boom and. Uh, I hit the I hit the I hit the shot uh, the 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 two to 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 put it in overtime, uh, and then Dennis Scott won the game. He had a bad shooting game, but he won that game for us. Mm. He won that game for us, but that that game was awesome, man. The the Michigan State game, the the the. the 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 LSU game, all those games, man. The tournament. We only had one game that we won big, and that was the first game. Uh, East Tennessee State. With uh the little point guard uh Jennings, yes, Jennings. yes, yeah, we blew yes. we blew them out, we blew them out, and then that was it. After that, we had games, we had nothing but overtime games. It, it, was, wow. it, was, it was it was it was tough. It was tough. You, you guys definitely want to run. Uh, you guys is called Lethal Weapon Three. Yeah, Lethal Weapon Three. Myself, uh, Brian Oliver, and Dennis Scott. And uh, you know, we played. We had a great year. We lost six games. We was twenty eight and six. We won the ACC that year. Played extremely well together. We played extremely well together because everybody knew what they had to do, you know, and to perform. Nobody was crying. We played like six, seven guys, you know, Coach Crimmins, and right. We played six, seven guys, so and it was great. Yeah, rumor has it that King Rice didn't want you at your uh, University of North Carolina. Well, you know, he he got it. I, he got it. I didn't go there. You know, what I'm saying <laughs> I, it was it was best for me to go to Georgia Tech. You know, that was the that was a great that was a great school for me, and um, I love Atlanta. I love Georgia Tech. The school, the the the, the team we had, and. A matter of fact, against UNC, I got the assist record. I got like 18 assists one night against them, against UNC. Uh -huh. one night. So, you know, it's, it all, it all goes, it, it all worked goes out. inside, man. You know, I, I got the assist. I had like two points, but I had 18 assists that game against UNC mm. that night. So that's the game, uh, Coach Cribbins likes. He always talks about that. I had two points, okay. but I had 18 assists. So now Arthur Walker says, was it the fact that Bobby Hurley ripped you in Golden Hoops that you killed them in the NCAA tournament? <laughs> I, I don't really remember if he ripped me, but you say he did. Yo, he listen, let me, let me tell you something. Yeah. People who've been watching you, they remember everything. Yeah. You right? They remember everything. Yeah. How you tied your shoe, the way you <laughs> smacked the ball in the foul line. These yeah. guys remember everything. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. was it, was I, it some kind of revenge I on know, Bobby that night? It wasn't no revenge. I just wanted to compete, you know, against the best the best point guards in in, in the city. And he was one of them over from New Jersey, St. Pat, Patrick's. You know, we never could play them, you know, on a regular season. I wanted to play them, but we never could do it. So I knew, you know, everybody was going to be out watching us play, you know, in the golden hoops and things of that nature. And um, mm. uh, against and Duke, Duke was one of those games where you just had to, you had to be ready to play or they was going to blow you out. Right. Okay. All right. How, how was it playing with Derek Coleman? Oh, uh, it, was, it was great. He's the best. Now, Derek Coleman is the best big man I ever played with. I, I give him much credit. He's he's awesome. Six ten could do it all. Could shoot. Could dribble. Post up. He, he he's the best man. He was an awesome player. But not only an awesome player, he's a good dude. You got to know him. He's a good guy. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Now my artist who grew yeah. up watching you play, he yeah. from Queens. You played the Jackson. He's actually yeah. doing your artwork right now. 
Yeah. Right? <laughs> you, he's doing a mural you as we speak. Okay, that's awesome, man. And, and we're going to definitely send it out to you, brother. Okay. Um, he wanted to know, how was it? How was Drazen Petrovich? Oh, Drazen Petrovich, man. He, he lost too soon, man. He's lost too soon, man. He was going to be up there, you know, with, with some of the best. He was at Portland, and he got traded to the Nets. And it just it just opened him up. It opened his game up in the East. He did. He had a hell of a he had a hell of a talent. Work ethic was awesome. Uh, everything. He was a good guy. Everything. He wanted to be the best, and he was on his way. And That's boom, right. got to a car accident. It's, it's just it's just sad, man. But he's a great teammate and everything. All right. How do you compare AU when you was coming up compared to now? Hmm. When I when I play, it was more like, uh, um, how could I how could I say it? it was more it was more organized. You just play with the team you play with. Now it's just it seems like a lot of the guys, a lot of the coaches are in it for the wrong reasons. You know, for the wrong reasons, getting getting certain kids uh, to go to certain schools so they could get rep or they can get money from that school nowadays. Yeah. And yeah. Um, you know. When I played, it was more for competition, um, going away, going and going to different cities, you know, bigging it up and just playing. Playing basketball was the main main reason. But nowadays it's a little different, man, and that's sad, you know. But you know, you handle, you know, if you're a coach, you're doing it the right way, you know. It's just just crazy, man. Now you now you make me think about how young how, how young kids that could play, get mistreated, you know, don't yeah. know their talents and their worth. And they got it and they gotta get a grip on, on on that. And once they get a grip, you know, on their talent and what they worth, they they'll get they'll get it right. Listen, Garfield Smith, yeah. right, listening to his story. Yeah. Right? He developed his whole game in the AAU system. Yeah. Right? And was developed. Whereas yeah. a lot of guys who come, they already got their games and they go to the AU circuit yeah. and they go yeah. get noticed. Speaking of him, I noticed that the AU benefited him because yeah. they they taught him the game. Yeah. Right? And yeah. it was something that uh that he could stay with for years to come and it helped him develop it even more to where he became the play he became the player in Maryland. Yeah. He's uh, he's he's a great he's a good friend of mine, you know. Um, uh, he watched, he watched, he learned, he played against some of the best. And that's one of the reasons growing up in New York, you could see all the, you know, all the basketball in the world. We played in different parks, recreation centers. You could see it. But with him, like you said, he watched, he learned, he practiced, he, he did it. And then that's where he learned the game at. He learned in, in New York city and he became very good. He got a scholarship to go to Maryland, play very well. What do you think we can do for our New York City basketball players to get more of our kids into Division One and get them ready for Division One basketball? I, I, I think I think they play it, playing, but also tell them tell them to go to school, man. Uh, let's 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 work it out where you can get some type of education with the basketball because a lot of a lot of us New Yorkers are living, you know, single parent homes. Um, Mother's not there all the time, so we're able to. Oh, uh, you, you, you come home from school. Oh, uh, I, I got homework. I ain't doing no homework. You're just going out yeah. to the park and playing ball. You're getting better basketball wise, but you're not getting better school wise. And I think you got to get both. You got to get both in there. I went to Catholic school. I went to Archbishop Malloy High School, which was very was very tough for me, but I was able to advance because I had good people in my corner. Vincent Smith, Pierre Turner, um, you know, those guys was like, hey, got to get education. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it, that's the key. And, you know, I think education is very, very serious. It's very important because, look, I play basketball. I played on the the, top, the toughest level in the NBA and was 35 years old when I retired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 14 years, 35 years old. When I retired, what I'm gonna do? You know, I had to go back to school. I went back to school and got my bachelor's at St. Thomas University down um in Florida. Got my bachelor's, 
and now I'm coaching. You know, I'm coaching at Fish University. So in AI is cool, but I'm coaching. I'm giving back, and that's, that's the main right. thing. And that's the main thing. And salute to you, my brother, for yeah. for persevering. Um, Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. That's that's very important. So you having mentors was the key to helping you. Yeah, that's, I think that's, that's why I think a lot of kids are missing right now the mentor aspect. Yeah. Yep. Along with playing basketball. You hit it right on the nose. You hit it right on the nose. It's the mentors. Someone that someone that's positive. I looked up to Kenny Smith. He was a positive influence. Vincent Smith, his brother, helped me grow as not only on the basketball court, but in school. I went to a very academic school and it was very difficult for me, but they told they showed me the way. They showed me the way and I was able to get over it. And that's what we got to do. That's what we got to do more of. And we're not doing that in New York. All, all New York, I, great. I love it. I love New York. But, oh, oh, you nice. You nice and bald. You nice. Don't worry about it. We're going to take it. Uh, you know, it's, 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 you know that's, that's what you hear. But you got to right. start, start hearing what you might not like at the time. And that's, right. you know, dealing with school, you know, don't deal with all this other nonsense. And that's what a lot of kids are dealing with right now. Because in the pros, you got to make how many pros is about 450 players? 450? So, yeah, that's, if that, yeah. If that, that's tough. That's tough to make, you know? So, you got to you gotta start man managing and, and seeing what's in it for your best interest, you know? You can use basketball, don't let it use you. Facts. Facts. So, who you say was your favorite point guard from New York from your era? Like somebody that you, you know, probably was your competition, but you said, you know what? I like that guy. Oh, I like, you know, you know rest in peace. I love Dave Edwards. You know, Dave Edwards with the Jackson High School. He, he from Queens. He's from That's my right. neighborhood. I, I love them, man. I love them. And, you know, rest in peace, man. That's um, right. Rest in peace, Dave. Good guy. Good guy. A great guy. Uh, he was great. And um, it wasn't that many great point guards in my era. They was all big guys. They was all big. Malik Sealy, yeah. you know, in my era, you know, it was, it was always, you know, rest in peace, Malik Sealy. Who, right. You know, he went to St. John's University with Louis Conestecca. You know, um, he had a great career. Um, you know, this, you know, there's a lot of New Yorkers who who played the game the right way. But they just played the game the right way, but they didn't want to do the other things. They didn't want right. to do the, They didn't want to go to school and and get educated, and, and and that's what happened, you know. But it's uh, you know, coming from New York, it makes it makes you or break you, coming from right. New York, and that's that's what it's that's what it's all about. So, who can you say was the best high school basketball player you played against? Best college player. And best pro that you played against? Best high school. One, one each. One each. Oh, ooh. I, I guess the best the best the best high school player. Uh I played against some great oh, I'm trying. Oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna say Yeah, yeah it's kinda of hard when you bust everybody ass. We, we get it, we get it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's, we get it. I can't I'm going to say the guy, the best high school player, Grant Hill. We played him in the beach ball classic, Ooh. and we beat him. But Grant Hill, was he was awesome. But, you know, this, a team, we beat them in the, in the beach ball classic in high school. Grant Hill was awesome. He was an awesome wow. player. Yeah. And then um, college, Ooh. Ah, I would have to say – let, let's let's forget about Shaquille O'Neal. Let's go with Steve right. Smith. Let's go with Steve Smith. You know mm -hmm. that's we beat we beat to go to the 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 the, the Elite Eight. Beat Steve Smith and them. He was great at Michigan State. He was awesome, Steve Smith. And then um, pros, whew, pros. Come on, man. The last MJ. dance just came up. You know, <laughs> you know right. Jordan, man, I played against them. See, but but I played against the three greatest that they're talking about now. You know, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, rest in peace, and That's LeBron right. James. I played against all That's three right. of them. But I'm going to wow. give them. 
I'm, I'm going to give it to, you know, I, I'm, you know, Michael Jordan, you know, is, is the Facts. best. Facts. Is, is the best. I think so. Yeah. All right. How, how does the, the, the business side of basketball in the NBA, how, how can it distract you, right? Yeah. And how and we know the benefits of it. How can the, the business side of basketball distract you from being an athlete? Oh, it, it definitely could distract you because it's like how much money I'm getting. And I seen a lot of this in my time when I played in the NBA. A lot of guys got the money and just didn't want to play no more. Just didn't have that <laughs> that um that 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 inspirate that that oh, that's all out because they got right. their money. They got their money. Nowadays I do see a lot of guys, you know, with all these $100 million contracts, they, they still competing and they still playing on a high level and they're still, they, they still want to get better. You know, that's what I do see the top, the top players. But most of you guys are just, you know, when I was in the lead, when I came early in the lead, it was just more get the money and then they stop playing, you know, right. for whatever reason that was, you know, but that's what, you know, you got to keep going, man. You got to keep, got to keep grinding and uh, finding a way to better yourself. Like like Steph Curry, I see he he's a great shooter. He's a great teammate. He's a great. He got all. Of, and I think he gets it from his father. I, I think because I played with Dale Curry, his father is Charlotte, right. and I think he gets a lot of his uh his uh the way he is. You gotta you gotta you gotta say you know. Uh, his brother, he got a twin. He, oh no, no, his, his brother. I forgot his brother's name. His brother played with Dallas. Um, uh, I forgot Steph. It's Steph. It's Steph, it's Steph Curry, and I forgot his brother's name. But and who? And Steph. Steph Curry. Steph, Steph Curry. Yeah, yes, Steph, Steph Curry. Curry. Yeah, yeah. Steph Curry, and um, they they're both they're both alike. You know, not playing wise, but. Mentally, mentally, right. And he gets and he gets it from his father, you know, Dale. And he raised two good kids, man, and uh, they doing well for themselves, and, yeah. and, and not for themselves, not only for themselves, but for the NBA. And um, and, and that's what I do see. You see, Steph Curry with Golden State, he won all the championships. He's still working out on his game. He's getting better because it's more to it than just money. You know, you right. see those type of guys. You see those type of guys. It's, it's a, I don't know how many guys in the lead is it. Maybe fifteen to twenty guys in the lead like that that got the money and just like keep working. Yeah, you gotta be built differently, man. Yeah, uh, my man Mark Petit. Mark Petit played a Hofstra. He said, "Give me your top five New York City ball players." So give oh, me the my... top five all time New York City play. Yeah. Oh, that's tough. That's tough, but. I'm I, I was starting off. I was starting off with Kareem. Yeah, yourself. I, you you put me in there. That's great. That's great, man. Thank Yo, you, Yo, brother, brother. Number two, like high school basketball players, and the, yeah. the impact that you had in New York. You yeah. changed the culture, fam. Yeah, thank you. I really You're appreciate right. it, man. Thank you, thank you, uh, Kareem. He, he he put me in there. He put me in there. Uh, I'm gonna say my boy Steph for Lincoln because I gotta throw a Lincoln guy in there. Yeah, Steph. Steph was great, but I would, I would, you, you put Steph. Steph is awesome, awesome player. But I would go, uh, I would go, Tiny Archibald, Tiny Man. Archibald. Um, it's so many New Yorkers. Chris Mullen, Chris Mullen. Oh man, it's so many. Uh, for me, for me. Yes, guys yes. That, for me, Kenny Smith, I have to put in there. And I Definitely. know it because for me, he's the reason why – he was the reason why I was so good is because of Kenny Smith. You know, right. His, you know, I wanted to be – I wanted to be better. I wanted to be like him and be better than him. So, you know, I, I would say Kenny Smith, Mark Jackson, you know. You know, you got Pearl in there, Pearl yeah. Washington. He was he's a great he didn't he might never had a great pro career, but for college and everything, he was the man. He was the man in college. Pearl Washington was the guy. You got Kenny, you got Kenny Patterson. He was right. the ball. He was nice. Boo Harvey over it's so many. I don't know, man. 
It's so nah, many. But you, so many you, you name you name you name the the, the core few that yes. I would say had an impact on New York. Pearl shifted the culture in New yes. York City, and he was around with the Big East. Versus oh, Florida. Big, Him and Patrick Ewan basically yeah. promoted the Big East. Yes, yes, they did. And that was awesome. That was awesome. And they and they right. had they a, gave uh, those guys on the on the East Coast something good to watch. And it helped us get better. Yes, it did. Pearl Washington was that guy. He was just awesome, man. He was just awesome. Yeah. You you guys, I, I put I you guys yeah, I'm, bad, I'm, bad. I'm bad when everybody say name five. You know, I'll be around the world, they like, name five players. But I can't name five players. I just be like, come on, right. man. I, it's gotta be it, it, it's gonna go ten to fifteen players I'm gonna name. That that that's been great. I could never do that, man. It's it's hard, brother. Yeah. You know, one of the reasons why I started this show is because I saw my man Lamar Odom on drink chats. Yeah. And I always say this, I didn't like the way he was represented, brother. So yeah. I wanted to create a platform where our guys from New York City, yeah. you know, and you, you can go on some you can go on ESPN Kenny, you can go on all the smoke. Oh. You don't have to be here, brother, but you you giving back to New York says a lot, right? And what That's we're trying to do Basketball right. head, my man, run it. This is a great show. Everybody should tune in, man, because we grew up together. You and, That's and, right. and you talk about the game, talk about life. It's, it's just an awesome. It's an awesome. It's an awesome plateau where we could get you know where we could get it off at, and that's here, yep. man. The social media. So I love it, man. Yo, brother, I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you for coming by. Appreciate you giving your time. Anybody got any more questions before we leave out, man? Because I don't want to, you know, cut it off too soon. And you guys say, yo, poor, I, want, I need to answer a question. Oh, okay. Somebody said, ask you about Sweepy, Lloyd Daniels. Oh, my God. That's like my that's like my brother, man. That's like we need to baby. get Lloyd on here. Anybody who in contact with oh, Lloyd. I'm, I'm in touch with him. I'll get him your number. I'll get him the number and tell him you oh. should go on. But Lloyd, hey, hey, what he does every morning. He, he, he put a scripture every morning to my phone. Every morning, a, a, a church scripture. He's doing real well, man, and God bless him, man. I love Lloyd. He was one of the best. He, he, he's the best. I, I, he, in my era, he was one of the best players to ever come out of New York, Queens. You know, he's he's a great guy, man. Lloyd Daniels. Could have put him in. Could have put him in that top five, right? So yeah, many. I put him, yeah, I could have put him in there. I could have put him in there. Let me tell you, Lloyd, Lloyd Daniels, who is a freshman, played at Jefferson, and we yeah. met him in the playoffs. And Kenny Parker, Kara's yeah. one brother, was on my team at Lincoln. Yeah. He and Lloyd was a freshman. Kenny was a senior. Kenny wound up going to St. Peter, so he was a Division One player. Yeah, okay. Lloyd taught him a new asshole <laughs> as a freshman. And when Kenny comes on here, we're gonna talk about that. We he reminded me, he said, Yo, G, remember that time I played against Lloyd? And he gave me like 29. It was sickening. He had yeah. PZ hair. Yeah, all that. He it, come, it was just he come and he was work like, you. who was this kid? Yo, he just come and play ball, man. He come and work you out. And what, That's what, it. Was, what was so uh you know great about his game, it was it was so fundamentally sound. He was so yeah. fundamentally sound. And he, yeah. he was he hit the, the middle of the backboard, the side backboard, everything. He just handled the ball, six rebounds, six. He was great, man. He's a great player. I always want to know who the hell taught him. Yeah. Right? Cause, <laughs> yeah, cause yeah. He was way yeah. more developed than a lot of guys. He was six seven. Yeah. He was with both hands and could dribble yeah. and could pass. Yeah, yeah. That was awesome. He was awesome. Look, brother, we going for days, man. We asked him about Ralph James already. Definitely yeah. wanted to get that out the way. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Say he was a walking triple double. Yeah, yeah. Lloyd Daniels yeah, walking triple double. Yeah, definitely. definitely. If he was definitely. able to uh, get a hold of himself, you know, through high school, he and college, he would have been great. He would have been great. You know what I'm saying, but that's other things he had, you know, taking advantage of him, taking advantage of him. But he's just a great person right now. I, I I just love him. He's a good person. 
Yo, Kenny, I, I want to bring you back one more time so I can show you how far we got with the artwork, and then we're going to wrap it up, all right? Okay, my bad. All right, all right. Come back, y'all.